Hey team, it's day nine of the 90 day challenge. I hope everybody's week's going well and I hope your day is going well and I hope your progress to your goals are going well if you're following along and going on this journey with me. I wanna jump into the six goals we have first of all and then secondly, want to jump into meal prep. Uh, there was a question asked of, you know, how do you maintain calories while you're at work or other activities? That's why I left my work gear on today. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Advantages, disadvantages, you know, how much time it takes and a few examples. But before we get into that, I don't have to use any red today. So I'm pretty happy about that. Let's go over our six goals. Remember calories, water, sleep. That is your trifecta. You've got to hit those three calories being the most important. Focus on hitting your calories, work up to getting your water, and definitely get your sleep. Calories one, sleep two, water three. So here we go. 227 this morning, I was actually about 226.4. I say about, but it was exactly 226.4 on the scale. Remember the day before, I was 228. And remember I was 227 and, and some change, I, I kind of forget, but I always round up. And you wonder, well, how can you go almost a pound, and I think it was like 1.2, 1.3 pounds down in a day. And remember what we learned about carbohydrates is that the more carbs you eat, the more water you retain. And the less carbs, you know, your body tends to shed a little bit of that water. For every one gram of glycogen, we retain three to four grams of water. So if you got a pound of glycogen, you got three to four pounds of water. If you take a look at my calories today, they're not quite 400 less than they were the day before. And also I have less carbs. I don't have my macro breakdown for you here, but I did eat less carbs yesterday. So I don't want you to go out and you know dehydrate yourself and completely cut out carbs and go on keto and all of a sudden you lose you know 10 pounds in a week and you're like oh this is awesome and then you can't maintain it then you get discouraged and 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 then you quit because you're like oh this is great in the beginning and now it's so hard to maintain well of course it is because you don't understand how carbohydrates and water retention and water weight works keep that in mind what we learned about it and then you'll see how your body and weight fluctuate in weight a lot of its water weight and really over time, you have to be cutting down consistently 500 calories for a pound a week and 1,000 calories a day for two pounds a week. So it's, it's an actual lot of calories. It's a lot of food. And over time, your, your weight's gonna fluctuate, but just know it is that carb amount and the water retention, especially because I'm drinking a gallon of water a day. Uh, you know, so my water's there. My water will flush you know, additional stuff. Your body does get rid of water. It doesn't keep all of it, right? But it's good for your organs. Um, try to get to that triple digit number. You know, we talk about that. And, and even if your goal, half your weight in, in pounds, convert that to ounces, and that's your, your water goal in the day. If that doesn't get you to the centurion mark or the hundred mark, try to get there eventually. Uh, water is good for you. And a way to um, curb that, if you remember me talking about how to consume or get some of that water in, is I drink 32 ounces of water in the morning. Now, the reason I do that is A, I'm dehydrated. If you sleep seven and a half hours like I did, I've said this before, you're gonna be dehydrated. You haven't drank anything for seven, seven and a half hours, eight hours even. So I drink 32 ounces in the morning and that's you know a little more than a third of what I gotta drink or a little less than a third, excuse me, of what I have to drink and it makes you feel better. It makes you have energy. It uh, gets rid of the headache. And I think you'll find that you eat less uh, in a day once you get to that centurion mark of water and also you feel energized and you don't have to drink as much of the caffeine, whether it's energy drinks, coffee, tea, whatever you have that you used to, to get that energy level. So get up to that hundred mark uh, and I think you'll find you'll feel better. Seven and a half hours, I already said that, 70 minutes of activity, doing that new exercise routine. I really am starting to like it, but I'm thinking based on how much volume I'm finding with each workout, I'm gonna, I'm gonna maintain between that 60 and 70 minute time. 208 grams of protein. I love my protein. I'm not gonna miss it much, if at all, during this 90 days. It is the building blocks of protein um, for the muscle, and uh, it also is thermogenic, and it also keeps me fuller uh, in a, if I hit my protein mark, which is one pound or one gram per pound of body weight. So let's jump into the meal prep, speaking of protein. Um, what is it? Advantages and disadvantages. How long does it take in examples? So what is it? It's exactly what the, it says. It's preparing meals ahead of time. So that's what meal prep is. Sometimes you hear people talk about, oh, I got a meal prep or I got a meal prep for tomorrow. Some people do it daily. Some people do it weekly. Some people do it every third or fourth day, uh, depending on when they have time. I do mine probably every other day to every third day. And the main thing I meal prep is my proteins. Uh, because I eat a lot of it, I don't have a bunch of time during the day uh, to be on the grill, uh, you know, cranking up the oven, on the stovetop, in an air fryer. I don't have time to be 
doing that every day, uh, day in and day out, right? So I do have times that I plan to meal prep. Uh, sometimes during the week, uh, I'll just do it before I go to bed. I'll do it when I get home and I'm, I'm getting ready to do my videos or I'm doing some research or I'm reading or I'm listening to my audiobooks. So you can multitask also when you meal prep. Some people do it daily. So an example of that would be like um, overnight oats. Uh, overnight oats is where people take, you know, like a cup of oats or a half a cup of oats, some almond milk, uh, a little bit of yogurt, maybe some berries, and you, you put it in the fridge for overnight, uh, and you wake up the next day, and it's a, it's a great morning or mid-morning, uh, or even lunch, depending on when you want to eat it. But the advantages of that are you save time, you definitely save money, because, uh, well, we all know how it goes when you get to work and you didn't bring anything to eat and you know what, uh, I might wanna go down to the cafeteria to get something because I'm hungry uh, or any other way to get food or sustenance during the day, uh, costs money. You know, and lastly, it, it also helps you stick to your to calories. So um, there's, there's advantages of it. The, the only disadvantage would be a lot of times I find myself making the same things over and over again because I just know those things. I know how to make them. I know how to make bulk sizes of them. Uh, so, you know, you tend to eat a lot of the same stuff, which is fine. Like I said, I only meal prep my proteins. I like to vary uh, what I eat for my starches, what I eat for my um, grains, uh, what I eat for my vegetables. Um, I like a protein shake uh, with some fruit in it here and there. So I like to vary the things that supplement. Like I said, my protein is one of my goals, so I make sure I get that. That's why I meal prep my protein. But there are some people that will meal prep their entire week and pack it up before going, and they'll have every meal done, which God bless those people who have the time to do that. I don't with three kids and all sorts of activities and work and, and what we're all doing. I don't have the time. So when I say how long it does it take, it can vary. Uh, you know, I mean, I multitask. So for me, I really don't know. I just pick out a time that I'm going to be doing something that I can cook with. And uh, that's when I meal prep. So normally it's when I'm uh, learning, uh, listening to my audio books or even watching videos, uh, educational videos. I can definitely cook while I'm doing that. So that's, that's when I do mine. So it just varies, I should say. Try it out. Um, you'll have to, you'll have to uh, definitely experiment to see, you know, what works for you and and what foods you like to make ahead of time because again, it's not gonna be your piping hot food and it's food you normally put in the, in the fridge. <laughs> That's just how it works. Uh, and the last thing, I already gave some examples so I don't need to do that. So anyway, I hope this has been informational for you. If you have any more questions about meal prep, uh, let me know. Uh, there are a lot of, again, the, a lot of the calorie counting apps that you get for free do have recipes and examples of those on it. So try to get some variety there, but also, remember why we meal prep. We meal prep for the primary focus of this 90-day challenge is your calories. So you know how much calories are in there. If you don't meal prep and you eat on the go and you try and figure it out, um, I know that's gonna happen, right? It's gonna happen, but if you make a, a habit of it happening, just like even though you're tracking your calories, uh, you know how we underestimate by 20%, you're gonna underestimate tracking your calories by 20% because unless you know exactly how they made that food, you know exactly what they put in that food, uh, and, or unless it's a fast food chain and, and the majority of time they make those the same, but you're gonna get massive calories with those anyway, so you wanna limit those, uh, you're probably going to underestimate your calories and then you're gonna wonder, oh, Richard, I'm tracking my calories, I'm getting my calories, why am I losing weight? It's gonna be because you're under, underestimated because you yourself didn't do uh, the work to prep that food or eat that food. So hopefully this helps. I hope you guys are doing well. Thanks so much for the support. If you have any additional questions, comments, please leave them below and I will answer or we can address them in subsequent videos. So thanks so much and I look forward to talking to you all tomorrow.